I begin in the name of the God whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is forever. The fact that Muhammad, God's mercy be on him, is uh, the prophet, uh, the messenger, the representative of God, has been put across by the Quran in a way that this claim has been supported by a number of arguments, number of evidences. We've already talked about three of them. The Prophet's character was an evidence of the fact that he was a messenger of God. The message, the book that the Prophet brought gives a number of different evidences, arguments to show that he indeed is God's representative. And then we saw that the earlier books have prophecies that confirm the fact that the last prophet was indeed a genuine representative of God. Now I take the fourth evidence that has been mentioned in the Quran in a number of passages. That evidence is a prophecy that was made by the Quran. In other words, made by the Prophet, that a certain incident is going to take place, a certain transformation in the Arabian Peninsula is going to be witnessed very soon. The incident, the transformation that was prophesied was improbable when the claim was first made. The Prophet, right at the beginning of his prophetic mission, stated, well, the Quran stated, he just reproduced what the Quran said, that these people who were opposing him, the leaders of the Quraysh clan, they are going to perish. And the Prophet, who at the time when this prophecy was being made, was almost alone by himself, supported by only a few people. The prophecy claimed that on the one hand, these strong chiefs of Quraysh are going to be destroyed. And on the other hand, the message of the Almighty, which the messenger is putting across, is going to dominate. The messenger and the message dominate the Arabian Peninsula. This claim was made, as I said, in the very early part of the prophetic mission. It's uh, mentioned in chapter 73, verses 15 and 16. The Almighty says, O people, O people of Quraysh, we have sent to you a messenger, like we sent a messenger to Pharaoh. He disobeyed him. That is, Pharaoh disobeyed that messenger, that is Moses. So we seized him with a grievous penalty, a grievous punishment. The understanding was clear that like Moses, in the case of Muhammad as well, it's going to happen that uh, the opponents, the adversaries, are going to be destroyed. God's punishment is going to visit them and the Prophet is going to dominate like Moses did. This prophecy was not just made in one passage of the Quran. The fact of the matter is that if one reads the Quran carefully, one would find that this prophecy was made over and over again. There are a number of chapters, surahs of the Quran, wherein we find this prophecy. In most cases, this future event that was to take place was described in a manner that stories of six important messengers were narrated one after the other. Each story mentioning the fact that messengers came to their respective nations 
they delivered God's message, their nation or a part of them rejected the message and ultimately God's punishment through one natural calamity or another visited these nations to destroy them. The names of Noah, Hud, Saleh, Lot, Shoaib and Moses, may God be pleased with all of them, have been mentioned over and over again in stories that have been described in different ways. But the end result, the outcome is the same. That these messengers, they came and when their nations, respective nations, opposed them, ultimately they were destroyed. Chapter 7, Surah Araf. Chapter 11, Surah Hud. Chapter 26, Surah Shara. And chapter 54, Surah Qamar are all describing these stories. Uh, some, some of them in longish passages, some of them in shorter passages. But these are not the only four surahs that are mentioning these stories. There are many other chapters, surahs of the Quran, which are mentioning the same prophecy, the same reality that was to unfold itself in later times. Why this repetition? That many people who ask why is the Quran repeating these stories over and over again when one mention of the story could have been enough? The answer is that the people of the Arabian Peninsula were being warned that if they are going to continue with their attitude, their stance of rejecting the message of God, then their fate is going to be settled in this very life. So therefore, better wake up and mend your ways. So, it so happened that this prophecy came true. The Prophet migrated to Medina from Mecca after spending 13 years as God's messenger. But like in the case of all earlier prophets of God, he too was opposed by his nation, so much so that he had to leave the city of his birth and migrate to Medina. Now, the Quran mentions the principle that it has always been God's policy that when he sends his messengers, they and their followers ultimately prevail and their adversaries, their enemies, they are destroyed. This principle is mentioned in Surah Al-Mujadila, 58th chapter of the Quran, verses 20 and 21. Katab Allah, God has written it down. He has made a firm declaration. I am going to prevail. Ana wa rusuli. I and my messengers. So, the Quran is unmistakable as far as mention of God's policy is concerned and as a consequence, the mention of the prophecy is concerned. How did it happen? The Quran tells us that the rule is that if a messenger is forced to leave the population where he originally delivers God's message, that population, that town is bound to be punished, bound to be destroyed, the people who rejected the messenger. So, after spending 13 years in Mecca and delivering God's message, when he migrated to Medina, the Quran mentions clearly, reminds that that migration is going to herald the beginning of uh, the punishment of the enemies. So it so happened that two years later, a battle was fought, the Battle of Badr, wherein all important notable chiefs of Quraysh who opposed the Prophet 
and forced him to leave the city. They were all killed in the battle. It doesn't happen uh, normally in the battles and wars fought between different armies, nations, that the generals get eliminated, all of them. But it's a unique battle in the history of battles wherein we find that all chiefs of uh, the tribe of Quraysh, except one, Abu Sufyan, who was not a part of the army and was to be saved from getting killed, the rest of them all were destroyed. Thereafter, the message continued to be delivered after this very clear sign that was put across to the people of uh, this Arabian Peninsula. Uh, if you are going to oppose our messenger and not believe in the message that he has brought, your fate is going to be the same as was met by the chiefs of Quraysh. From the year 2 after Hijra, after migration, till year 9, um, there were seven years when people were given opportunity to convert to Islam. Why convert to Islam? Because the message of Islam was delivered by the messenger so clearly and convincingly that there remained no doubt in the minds of those who were open-minded, honest people that the message was from God. And those who didn't accept it and denied and rejected it were the ones who did not want to believe. And they did not want to believe because their character, their morals were not up to the mark. In other words, they were morally corrupt people. So it has always been God's policy when he sends his messengers and the nation rejects the message that the messengers put across to their nations, they are destroyed because they prove through their conduct that they don't deserve to live anymore. This life is a life of trial. Everybody is free to choose whatever he or she wants to choose. God doesn't force people to believe in his religion in this worldly life normally. However, this facility is available to all human beings because the truth of God's message is not quite as clear as it becomes to those people who are visited by God's messengers directly. Once the message of God is absolutely clear and there is no doubt in the minds of those who are its addressees and they still reject and deny it, they are not allowed to live in this world any further beyond a certain deadline. That deadline uh, was reached in the year, ninth year after Hijra. In the intervening seven years, only the blatant rejectors of the message were killed. In the ninth century Hijra, it was declared in the Quran that after the lapse of the sacred months, uh, all people who were polytheists belonging to the nation of the messenger and who have not accepted the faith of Islam are going to be killed. Like God has been destroying and punishing earlier nations through one natural calamity or another, in this particular case, it were the swords of the companions of the messenger that were employed by the Almighty to destroy those who rejected the truth to make sure that the earlier prophecy comes true. So the enemies of the messenger belong to three categories. There were polytheists, there were the people of the book and there were hypocrites. There is one chapter, one surah, Surah at tawbah the ninth chapter of the Quran which describes how this punishment was implemented. This chapter is the only chapter which doesn't begin with the customary beginning verse of the Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All other 113 
surahs, chapters of the Quran begin with this verse, but not the ninth chapter. Because the ninth chapter, ninth surah, Tawbah, is a surah chapter of punishment. And Bismillah Rahman Rahim, this verse is talking about God being extremely merciful, the one whose mercy is to last forever. So the message of the surah and the verse were not consistent with each other. And therefore the verse was not mentioned. So the first 28 verses of this chapter, they're talking about the fate that was met by the polytheists who rejected the Prophet. The Quran mentions that after the lapse of the sacred months, get hold of them and kill them wherever you find them. Except if they believe, they repent, say their prayers regularly and pay zakat, the obligatory religious spending. That is, if they declare that they are Muslims, and they start practically following Islam. They're going to be spared. Otherwise, they will meet with God's punishment. The 14th verse of the chapter clarifies that this use of swords of the companions of the messenger against these polities is actually divine punishment. It is, in fact, God who is punishing these people like he punished the enemies of Noah through floods, through rainfall. Uh, this time round, it's not the natural calamities, but the swords of the companions of the messenger that were employed in order for the divine task to be accomplished. Uh, the second part, brief part of the chapter deals with the punishment meted out to the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, they were not killed, but they were fought against and were subjugated. The third, the longest part of uh, the surah, the chapter, chapter number nine, is devoted to the task of taking care of the hypocrites and exposing them. So in other words, the three enemies of the messenger of God those who rejected the message, the polytheists, the people of the book, and the hypocrites, they have all been dealt with in this chapter. So, the Quran mentions a prophecy right at the beginning of the prophetic mission, which seemed very improbable, out of the question, very unlikely, and yet, at the end of the relatively brief period of 22, 23 years, that prophecy was fully and completely fulfilled when the messenger of God and the message of God dominated the entire Arabian Peninsula and all opposition was eliminated. Mm -hmm.